The hand of the Lord is always when it plays upon you is for care. God's hand must be in your life. God's hand is the good hand. When God deliver you from something, tell yourself, the hand of the Lord is mighty in my life. When God bring you out, tell yourself, the hand of the Lord is mighty in my life. Today my message to you is about the hand, the hand. Life is a journey, not a race. In life, I pray that the hand of God will rest upon you. I pray that the hand of God will be with you. I pray that the hand of God will guide you the hand of god is the presence of god my life is in your hands those are the hands that signed your pardon those are the hands that was nailed to the cross those are the hands that carried you when no one cares the life, your life is in his hand. As we look at this first slide, you can tell by this first slide that there's a younger hand holding, there's a younger hand holding an a older hand. If you look at the, the older hand, that hand tells a lot of story. It tells of age. It tells of work. It tells of commitment. It tells of sacrifice. It tells of care. It tells of provision. That older hand tells a lot of stories. And as the younger hand is holding on to the older hand, you can see the, the, the younger hand is holding on to the older hand with respect and tenderness and concern and love. They say the picture tells a thousand words. And there's so many things that you can read. Look at your mother's hand if she's sitting beside you and say, thank you, mom, for your hand. Look at your father's hand. Look at your, your husband's hand, your wife's hand. Just, just look at those hands. Look at those hands. Look at those hands. <laughs> look at those hands. When you shake a hand, you transfer care. If you shake a hand, that's why a handshake should be, the trans should be sincere. If, if you're not going to be sincere in your handshake, don't bother shake. A handshake should be sincere. Your hands are important. Could you imagine surviving without your hands? How would you do your accounting work? How would you do your lawyer's work? How would you do your engineering work? How would you do your chemistry work? How would you do your hairdressing work? How do you do your brickwork? How do you do your carpentry work? Your hands. Just say, thank God for my hands. Just say, thank God for my hands. That's why when you come to church, you lift your hands and you praise God. And it's, the hands are saying, Lord, I surrender all to you. I surrender my hands and I surrender my life. Your hands are important. And the most, sometimes we take a lot of things for granted because they're working. But if the moment something stops working, that's when you learn to appreciate it. 
That's, that's when it comes to mind. Otherwise, you take it for granted. Your hands are important. There's a lot of other important part of your body, but today I want to talk about the hands because I want to re relate that to the hand of the Lord. Your hands are important. Those hands may, by, by the time you reach 50 or 70, maybe more than a million dollars pass through your hands. Somebody said, where did it go? But it did pass. <laughs> it passed through your hands. And it passed through your hands to take care of others. Your hands are important. Your hands are important. Say it again. Thank God for my hands. Lift them to Jesus. Lift them to him. Your hands are important. Life is a journey. And you have to journey with your hands. We race to grow up. You remember when we were 15, 16 or when we were... 12, 11, we're rushing to get old. We're rushing. I wish I could do my own thing and get my own car and have my own apartment and have my own house and go to my own job. And by the time you are 50, you wish you were young. <laughs> I wish I could go back to those younger age and we do everything to try to stay young and, and keep young and look fresh and young. Life is a journey. Things will happen in your life. Don't rush life, but make sure you are prepared to die. Unfortunately, we start young, or fortunate we start young, we get older, older. The young die now and the old die now, but one day we will die. If we live to 110, we will still die. So, so a lot of times we use these hands to prepare for a lot of things, but we don't use them to worship God, and we don't use them to prepare to meet our God. Above all that we do, prepare to meet the Lord. The hand of the Lord, the Bible speaks about the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord could be against you. There's a lot of scripture that said the hand of the Lord was against them. The hand of the Lord could be against you. That is when people are doing constantly things that is against God. So God uh, bring a judgment against them. And the Bible used that as the hand of the Lord against them. When the Philistine took away the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible said the hand of the Lord was against the Philistine. The hand of the Lord was against them. But the hand of the Lord could be for you. The hand of the Lord can be for you. And there's so many scriptures that talk about the hand of the Lord being for us. And the hand of the Lord being with us. And the hand of the Lord carrying us. The hand of the Lord, we want it to be for us. We want the hand of the Lord will be for us. The hand of the Lord strengthens the hand of the Lord leads, and the hand of the Lord upholds. It upholds. We should strive to seek the face of the Lord for the hand of the Lord to be upon us. When someone plays their hand on you, depending on how they place their hand, it could be for love, it could be for care, and it could be for abuse. The hand of the Lord is always, when it plays upon you, is for care. The hand of the Lord was upon them. The hand of the Lord was with them. The hand of the Lord is for care. The hand of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. Let's say it together. The hand of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. Look at these hands. Those hands tell a story. Those hands tell the story. If you should look at those hands, maybe I guesstimate those hands may be about between 72 to, to 90 years old, roughly. So, so I said maybe those hands are about 84 years old. 
84 years old. If, if you look at someone's hands, you can tell that it's been through some experiences and it has done something. The hands that care. Let's look at a woman's hand. If it's 84 year old, just like that one we just saw. By that time, they have lifted about 1.5 million pounds. They lifted babies. They lifted dinner. They lifted pots. They lifted groceries from the car. They lift all kind of things. And they carry things to take care of people. Those hands are hands of experience. They have created about not six, 60 meals. I think that's about should be about 6,000 meals. Six, I think that's 60,000 meals. I don't know how that typo got in there. They have created about 60,000 meals for a hand to prepare for a family of five meals every day, that's a lot of work. And when you come home and your mom make your meal for you and you say, I don't want that. <laughs> Do you know what sacrifice those hands went in to prepare those meals? And by the time she passed on, she made about 60,000 of them. I make a deal in my house. My wife does most of the cooking Almost all of the cooking, but sometimes I cook. I said, if I cook and nobody eat me, now nah, cook again. <laughs> so much sacrifice. You know what sacrifice I have to do to make that thing stay good and, and spiced up for you? And you don't want it? And sometimes when she cook and they don't eat or not ready to eat, she don't mind, but me can't handle that. I can't handle that. A sacrifice is a sacrifice, and we should learn to appreciate a sacrifice. By this time, this hand has done about 8,000 laundry loads. And thank God it's a machine that they push thing in nowadays, but there are times when you used to use your hand to wash it. <laughs> Our modern children don't know about that. And that's, that's hard work. And sometimes they have to do two and three loads per week. Or two loads per week. Especially if you live in a place where a lot of dust arise. Because everything gets soiled. Or your kids play basketball. Or they play a lot of uh, uh, baseball and things that they have to roll in the dirt. And your mom get that thing really nice and clean. And you want to disrespect your mother? Those hands must have done about 8,000 8, loads of laundry. They have given baths to others, at least 5,000 baths. Wash you when you're crying, when you're baby, when you're small. Wash the grandchildren, wash everybody and clean up everything. And this is just, this is just a snapshot. But those hands, by then, they're given about 60,000 hugs. Our hands are important. If you go to a man's hand, by that time, 84, they have lifted about 4 million pounds. They have given about 30,000 hugs. They have given about 90,000 handshakes. And this is just my estimate. And they have given about 2,500 bats to their children or young ones and grandchildren. And they have given millions of keystrokes, whether it's a typing as an accountant or typing as a lawyer or typing as somebody else, millions of keystrokes, just to show you their hands that cares. Their hands that cares. Look at these hands. They're not touching the dumpling yet. <laughs> these hands have not yet begun to work. You can look at a person's hands and make uh, a judgment call or approximation of how delicate the hands and how hard that person have been working with their hands. 
depends on the type of job they may not be doing manual labor but you can see that these hands have not cooked 60,000 meals yet you can see that they have not do 8,000 loads of laundry yet but by the time they reach 84 they may have done that take care of your hands everybody say take care of your hands one day I told Duane, I don't know if he did it yet, I doubt if he does it, that he should insure his hands. Because he's playing music and piano and he, and he gets some of his income from music and there are some people that play basketball and there are some people that are addicted typists and they, they, their hands have to be used extremely more than and above everybody else's hand. And uh, if you use your hand a lot, you, you should think about insuring your hand. Insure in your hand. If, it, if, your, if your hands are what bring your living, I don't know if there's any insurance for that. Anybody does insurance here? I don't know if there's any insurance. A basketball person may have to insure their hands. A, a, a person that, if you lose your feet and you play classical music, you can still play with your hands. But you can't play basketball. So your hands are important. That's what I'm saying. The things that we take for granted are so important. The hands change as we age. Our hands change. As we get older, our hands change. It doesn't mean that your hand is no good anymore. It's just because you're getting older. So as we come back from the message on heritage, remember that Things that are passed on to you were passed on by loving hands, caring hands, hands that consider you as an important person. There are hands, you see there's older hands that holding on to a younger hand for a little handshake. The hands are important. When you look at a person's hand, it tells a lot about them. And it tells you how much they care. When you touch with your hand, depending on how you touch, there can be a touch of care and there can also be a touch that is a touch of abuse. We're talking about the touch of care today. You can see that this nurse or this daughter or this person taking care of this elderly person, that's a touch of care. They don't want them to fall. They hold on to them or they talk to them. That's a touch of care. Make sure your hand provide care. Make sure your hand provide care. Make sure your hand provides care. Look at these hands. Somebody say, some younger person as they were growing up and they're Looking with fancy hands that I show you before with the fancy hands here. The fancy hands are here that I show you. They said, I would never marry somebody like this with rough hands. But these hands have been through so much to take care of you that by the time you reach their age, your hand may be just like theirs. You ever see a mechanic's hand? They're always cleaning it because the grease and the trap from the cars are getting it. You ever see a farmer's hand? A farmer ever shake your hand? That hand is all callous and hard because they have to use their hand to win bread. A farmer's hand. Those hands are hands that have been through the waters. And those hands are hands that have taken care of generations of people. And for me to take care of my generation, my hands have to experience it. This hand is a hand that passing on a motherly blessing to a daughter. As you see how that mother holds that daughter's hand, Maybe a daughter of 30 years old or maybe even more. That's an elderly mother of 84 years old or more. She's just passing and said, daughter, I love what you have done for me. I love how you took care of me. That's, 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 that's what I'm reading in this message. I appreciate you, daughter. 
This is what I'm reaching in this message. And the hand pass on that care. Now the daughter is saying, Mom, I'm here to take care of you. I love you and I appreciate you. I'm not going to leave you alone. That's what this, to me, that's what this hand is saying. The hand is saying a lot of things. It will be all right. It will be all right. It will be all right. This hand is providing care. There's a good hand and there's a bad hand. The good hand guides. The good hand protects. The good hand provides. The bad hand hurts. The bad hand abuses. And the bad hand steal. We want to talk about the good hand today. Let everybody say, I love the good hand. I love the good hand. Your good hand is a hand that guides, protects, provides. That's a good hand. And that's the hand of God. God's hand is the good hand in your life. If God's hand was not in your life, you would not be here today. I would not be here today. God's hand must be in your life. God's hand is the good hand. Hallelujah. There's this young man. His name is Nick Vujicic. He has no legs. And he was born with no hands. And he had no worries. <laughs> no legs and no hands. And he can swim. No legs and no hands. And guess what? He got married and he have a family. No legs. No hands. And his family, they all have legs and hands. God is merciful. This man go around all the world and he give speeches to encourage people. If he can do it and you have your two hands and your two legs, why are you so discouraged? This is his family. And this is him giving speeches to thousands of people. And he does that regularly. And if you go on YouTube, type his name in, you'll be inspired by what he say to others. Because he's an encourager. And there's a lot of people that have two hands and two feet. And they never think one day to work honestly. They break into people's houses. They steal people's things. And they want to abuse people with their hands. No, we don't want those kind of hands. We want the good hand. Let everybody say, the good hand. Let everybody say, the good hand. And the good hand is the hand of God. The Bible said, he's got, the writer said, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the wind and the rain in his hand. He's got the little bit of baby in his hand. He's got the sister, you and me sister, in his hand. He's got you and me brother in his hand. He's got everybody here. In his hand. Whose hand do you want to be in? God's hand. I want to be in 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 God's hand. There's a few more songs that said, I feel the touch of his hand so warm and tender. It's leading me in the path that I must trod. Hallelujah. I dare not walk alone because the hand of the Lord is leading me in the path where I must trod. I have no fear for Jesus walks beside me for I am sheltered in the arms of God. Hallelujah. So let the storm cloud arise. Let the dark cloud rise. They don't worry me because I am sheltered in the arms of my God. 
God. He walks with me and none on earth can harm me because I am sheltered in the arms of God. I pray that you will be sheltered in the arms of God. I pray that you will be sheltered in the arms of God. The writer said, lay your hands on me, Jesus. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. I don't mind. When others lay their hands on you, you do mind. But when Jesus lay his hand on you, it brings healing. It brings recovery. It brings deliverance. It brings strength. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Let's praise him. Praise him. And say, thank you, God, for laying your hands upon me. Joshua said, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you pass over as your Lord did in the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. That all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty. When God give you a testimony, tell yourself, the hand of the Lord is mighty in my life. When God deliver you from something, tell yourself, the hand of the Lord is mighty in my life. When God bring you out, uh, tell yourself, uh, the hand of the Lord is mighty in my life life Ezra chapter 7 and verse 28 who had extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselor and before all the kings of the mighty princes as and sorry I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. I was strengthened because the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. Let's say this together. I will be strengthened because the hand of the Lord is upon me. You got to believe it in your heart. When you look back, you can see how the hand of the Lord had guided you. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter number 3, The Spirit of the Lord lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness, that means heaviness, in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity of Tel Aviv and dwelt by the river Shebar and I sat where they sat. And I remained there astonished, in wonderment, in amazement, in shock. I was stunned among them for seven days because of the hand of the Lord carried me. And I was in amazement for seven days. When somebody else's hand touched you, you can just be the ordinary person. But when God's hand touch you, it brings about a change. And if you are not changed from your heart by the touch of the hand of God, no other hand can deliver you like the hand of God. But allow the hand of God to touch you. Allow the hand of God to heal you. Allow the hand of God to deliver you. Allow the hand of God to strengthen you. Allow the hand of God to lift you up. Allow the hand of God to minister to your heart and to your needs. Allow his hand. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me in the spirit of the Lord. See what happened? When God's hand come upon you, his spirit takes over. His spirit carries you his spirit leads you, his spirit directs you, his spirit uplifts you. As long as God's hand is upon you, you don't have to worry about anybody else's hand. And I want you to get that in your heart, in your mind, and in your beliefs. If God's hand is upon you, 
You don't have to worry about anybody else's hand, even if those hands are not treating you right. But as long as God's hand is upon you, God will turn around the situation and make you a strong, victorious person because his hand is upon you. So he carried me in the spirit, set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Bones, what happened after you die? You decay. When you decay, the flesh goes, everything comes off your body. And everything is removed and the bones are left. It takes long, long time for the bones to decay. When there are only bones left, that means all strength is gone, all muscle is gone, there's no life left, there's dead, 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 dead. Can't be worse than dead. So he set him down in the middle of the middle of the valley of bones and they were dry and he said unto me while his hand was upon me can these bones live and I answer oh Lord God thou knowest and again he said unto me prophesy to these bones and said unto them oh ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord hallelujah thus said the Lord God Unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. When the presence of the Lord come into your house, into your room, into your life, and the hand of the Lord, no matter how dry it is, no matter how dead it is, God is going to say, no, you can live. You have hope. You have strength. Because the hand of the Lord is here. As long as the hand of the Lord is here, you're going to recover. You're going to get up. You're going to turn around because the hand of the Lord is here. Yes, Lord, thou knowest these dry bones can live in the name of Jesus they can live and I will put lay sinews upon them and I will bring up flesh upon them and cover you with skins and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord when God bring you out of your trouble, praise him. When God opened the door for you, don't let the devil say you're too shy. Praise him. Don't worry about who's watching or looking. Just praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. Because his hand upon me. So I prophesy as I was commanded. And as I prophesy, there was a noise. Something is happening. Something is happening. Oh God, I didn't know where hope is coming from. But I believe your hand is upon me. And something is happening. Somebody gave me a phone call. Somebody gave me a raise. Somebody called me and encouraged me. Somebody brought me to the altar. I got the Holy Ghost. Somebody tell me that there's joy in Jesus something is happening I can turn around because God hands are upon me there was a noise and then there was a shaking and the bones came together ah, hallelujah oh God bring my bones together bring my bones together bring my bones together bone upon bone bring my bones together and when I beheld lo the sinew and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. In the progress of your recovery, in the process of your recovery, there's always progress. You don't recover 
maybe after the first initial sign of hope but as you walk in that hope as you carry on in that hope as you believe in that hope before you know it, by the time the year is over when did this happen because God's hand was upon you all you have to do is walk according to his precepts and his presence when his hand is upon you he will deliver you then he said unto me prophesy to the wind and prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus said the Lord God Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, and they shall live. If God say you shall live, if you are dry bones, you're going to live. If God say you shall live, if you are dead, you're going to live. If God say you shall live, if you are broke, you're going to live. If God say you shall live, if you're weak, you're going to live. If God say you shall live, you shall live. Don't no matter what anybody else says. If God said you shall live, you shall live. Because his hand is upon me. So I prophesy as he was, I was commandment. And he breathed and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood up on their feet and exceedingly great army what a mighty God oh God when they kill you stand upon your feet how are you going to stand upon your feet? Because the hand of the Lord is upon me. When they talk about you, stand upon your feet. How are you going to stand upon your feet and live? Because the hand of the Lord is upon me. When they tell you you can't make it for another day, stand upon your feet. Because the hand of the Lord is upon me. Prophesy in my life. Prophesy in my heart. Prophesy because the hand of the Lord is upon me. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. I don't mind. And he said unto me, Son of man, these are the bones of the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And everybody ever tell themselves that? We are cut off. For our past, your, your hope is lost, your bone is dry, there's no supply. Then, therefore prophesy, oh God, prophesy to my spirit, prophesy to my heart. Oh, lay your hands on me, Jesus. Thus saith the Lord, behold my people, I will open your grave. Wherever you have been buried, wherever you have been knocked down, wherever you have been hit down, wherever you can't get up again, wherever you have been hurt, wherever you have been troubled, oh, prophesy to the grave and cause you to come out of the grave. And I, and verse 12 again, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus said the Lord God, behold, all my people, I will open your graves. So if God said he's going to open your grave, who is going to close it? Nobody can close it because God said, I will open your grave and cause you to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. No matter what's holding you down, I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, open that grave because the hand of the Lord is upon you to strengthen you. Open it and praise God. Jesus signed my pardon. This I surely know. He took my place at Calvary where I don't have to go. I can rejoice in him. I can praise him. I can worship him. I can bless him because he lays hand upon me. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave. Oh, my people, 
and brought you out of your grave. Is anybody in a metaphorical grave today? Jesus is saying, come out. Whatever is bearing you, whatever dust is upon you, God is saying, my hand is upon you. Get out of your grave. Get out of your grave. Whatever is suppressing you and holding you down from the awesome presence of God, get out of your grave. Last verse, verse number 14. And ye shall and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land when then shall you know that I am the Lord that has spoken it and I perform it. Ah! God speak it and God perform it. And in his speech and in his performance, he said it will be done in your life because my hand is upon you. Young ones, if any way, shape, or form you're being discouraged today, I want a hand to touch you. Oh, somebody touch them, touch them, touch them, hug them. You can hug them now. It's okay, you can hug people now. Touch them. Pass on, pass on a blessing to them. Someone, someone, someone. You have to get anybody. This, this society want to destroy our young ones. Bring them out of the grave. Bring them out of the things that is oppressing them. Oh, touch somebody, touch somebody, touch somebody, pray over somebody, ask God to bless them, ask God to help them, ask God to strengthen them, ask God to anoint them, ask God to keep them, and young ones you pray to, young ones you pray to, young ones you pray to, Lord tell Jesus, oh God lay your hands on me, lay your hands on me, get me out of this grave, I want to rejoice from the depths of my heart, get me out of this grave, free up my spirit, free up my life, get me out of this mind of dejection, oh God, free up my spirit, I want to be touched by you, I want to be touched by their loving hands.